Hello everyone. Welcome back to another process video. I am still working in my traveler's notebook insert, working on photos from a photo history architecture, whatnot walk from last summer. I did that tour with a friend and I have left off at the farmer's market and I have more photos that I want to do from that. So these are my next two. I have some potatoes and onions here and beautiful cauliflower. And at first I didn't think these would go together. However, I saw that there's purple here and some purple on the onions here. So I'm actually going to work with purple, which isn't a color that I see in scrapbooking a lot, but I think it'll work to kind of bind these together. And unfortunately I don't have paper pre-cut that's the right size for this insert, but I found this in my stash. This is an old Creative Memories mat. Can't tell you what line it's from because it's many, many years old, but the whole stack came in kind of these jewel tones and you would get one side that was more solid and then one side that had a pattern of some kind. And I think the pattern is interesting here. It works. It's got, you know, kind of a circular element happening and we've got circles here, somewhat, you know, rough circles here. So I think the pattern will work. It won't be distracting. Um, but this is only four and a half by six and a half and it's the only one I have. So. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with that. Obviously I have to cut it in some way if I want parts of it on both sides, which I probably do. So I haven't figured that part out yet, but this is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go off camera, figure out how I'm gonna cut this and how I want to um, start my design here, and then I will be back. So I decided that I would just cut the piece of paper right in half, so half and half. I did stagger these a little bit. I didn't want them totally lined up. I like them a little kind of off center, off kilter with each other. Uh, so I have already adhered them. And then I will go to work on how to place my photos. I think I have my photo placement decided. Now these photos were four by four when I started. That was a little too wide. So I've cut them both to three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So they're still square, they're just slightly smaller because I do like to have a little bit of a white margin around the edge um, so that it doesn't go completely to the edge of the paper in most cases. So I did trim those down. I think the placement is going to be about like this pretty much. So once I get those adhered to the paper, then I'll go in and start looking at the embellishments that I can add to bring this more to life. So I was looking in my stash for some things that might go with this design and I did find a couple of things. I found two flare buttons or badges um, that are just random stuff. I don't even remember what I got them with when I bought them, um, but they both have purple in them. This one is just a purple and white stripe. This one actually has purple and kind of that olive green and I think that would match this really well. So I'm wondering if I can just kind of put it up here you know, as an extra thing. I'm really liking this white space, so I don't know that I wanna add a ton up there. But I like the way that that might look there. And then this purple and white stripe, I wondered if I could make it work kind of, you know, opposite to this diagonally here. But that's a lot of purple on purple. There's no other color really to break that up like there is here where I have green. So if I were to use that, I would probably layer it over something else. And speaking of that, I found two other things. Uh, these are both sticker sheets from Coco Daisy. I subscribed to one of their kits, and so this came in one of the last ones. I like this. It just says dated, all of them say that, but it's got this yellow and green. Well, guess what? There's yellow right here, a little bit here, and there's enough green in here. This isn't yellow, it's brown, but it has kind of a yellowy tint to it when you hold it up there, so I think I could get away with it. And then the other one is this. I could just use this label because it is that darker yellow gold color and then stamp something on it or maybe find um, some word phrases. I have those um, from Tim Holtz. Everybody probably has these in their stash somewhere, right? So I have some of these. So I'm just wondering if I can somehow do some layering to make all those colors work together. So that's my next trick is to figure out how to make this all look cohesive. When I was looking through some things that I could add to the embellishments and the photos, I went into my small scraps and I found these. 
So this has that goldish color. There is a pattern, but I think I can tone it down a little bit with this. This is um, not quite olive, but it's pretty close. And there's a slight kind of leaf pattern in it. And so it brings out that kind of natural plant and food element to it. So I think together I can somehow make these work. So I'm probably gonna use little bits of it on both sides of the page and see how that comes out. I ended up changing my mind a little bit on the right hand side of the page. I put on that gold pattern paper and the green and then when I put the flare on top of it, it just looked like a little too much going on right there. And so I did decide to move it up here along the edge and then it pushes that design up so there isn't such a huge blank space here. Now this is still somewhat blank and I may stamp here or something, but I really don't plan to do a whole lot to it because I like that white space. I could also, if I wanted to, um, do a little bit of gold Heidi shine because I do have that gold element, but I'm just not sure yet. So for now, I'm going to leave it and I'm going to move on to the other side of the page. I did decide to use this label and I stamped on it. It's a little bit slick, so I use stays on, just says good stuff. And then this is the set I used. It's from Studio Calico. It says Hello Forever and Studio Calico. And I just used this one here. I'm not sure if you can buy this on their website still or not. I don't, I don't know. I've had it a while. Um, but that's where you can go looking for it if you find that of interest. I did attach the label down here and I cut it just a little bit so it hanged directly off the edge there. But I've decided I wanna add some other stuff too. So I found this little green tag and just stamped some little hearts on it and I'm going to layer it like this. So it's touching the top there. And I used another stamp set by Studio Calico. It's kind of hard to see, but this one says it's a collaboration between In a Creative Bubble and Studio Calico. So that's where that came from. I just used those hearts. I used stays on again because this is a little bit of a slick surface. I wasn't quite sure if a regular ink would take. So I just went with the stays on to be safe. So I'm going to put that on. And then I think I'm going to layer this other flare like so. So that they are kind of opposite each other on that diagonal. It brings in the color and it gives it a matching aspect. To complete this page, I did layer all of these together and then I adhered the flare badge with some glue dots. So that side was done. And then for this side, I did decide just to stamp a little bit up in that corner to bring in the black that's over here. So I did hashtag the happy now. And that is from this set by Studio 29 Designs. They are no longer in business, uh, but you might be able to find it on eBay or something if you if you really like it. So it's just a bunch of different hashtag phrases. Those are they're kind of fun to use. So I use that one. So here's a close up of the completed layout. And that's it on that one. So another one completed. I'm excited to be getting closer to completing this project. And thanks for watching everybody. See you later.